Welcome to the 6 map tools tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use the new standardization function introduced in XMAP tools 241. For that we need a phase, in this example white mica, and we need to have some spot analysis that we use as internal standard. In this example I already unselected some of the spot analysis, those that were located near the grain boundary or near mineral inclusions. So you can select the new standardization function in this menu and click on standardize. Now we need to define the name of this new standardization and to select the element to be calibrated, in this example all of them, and the program opens this standardization tool. In the menu you can see all the elements to be calibrated and we need to go through all of them uh, one by one and define the calibration curve. To define the calibration curve we use the value of the intercept and the value on x and y coordinate of the, the calibration points here in red in this diagram. This diagram shows the standard composition of the spot analysis against the pixel composition in x-ray intensity of the uh, corresponding pixels and for the element selected in this menu. So for aluminum we see that we can define the calibration curve, the black curve, going through 0, 0. So if I press apply auto it just applies this calibration curve. Now I go to iron and we see that for iron things are different. Now if we fit the data, this is the blue curve in this example, we see that we have an intercept that is greater than 0 here in this example 69 and this is the value of the background that we reconstruct from the spot analysis and the pixel composition. This red uh, guy is an outlier. In this automated background detection window there is a diagram showing the evolution of the residual, the residual being the sum of the distances between the spot and the calibration curve with the background value. It can help you to define where is the optimal background value. Those two diagrams show just the distribution of the residuals with the distance. So the distance to the points compared to the number of standards. And we see that of course with the background the distribution is much better than with only the old method, the curve going through zero. So for iron I just place apply auto because the program correctly detected the trend in the spot analysis. For potassium there is no need for background correction, we can just press apply auto. Uh, same for magnesium, there is a background correction but the program was able to find the trend nicely. Okay, so now let's do uh, manganese and for manganese it's a bit different because we have very low uh, count rate in the map between 2 and 3 x-ray whereas we see a variation in the spot analysis and this means that we are below detection limit for the map condition. Manganese map should be uh, zero. So I'm going to use this example to show you how to use the manual background mode. So I can press here manual and it goes to the manual mode and everything turn green and green means just manual. So now you can edit either the intercept value or the coordinates of this calibration point. So I'm going to change the background value to 3 in order to get something that is almost horizontal, which means that manganese will be 0 in your map. Now let's select sodium and for sodium it's easier because we see that we correctly interpolate the trend observed in the composition and we get a background value of 75. So I can just press uh, apply auto and then silicon. Silicon we don't need any background correction because the count rates are really high for silicon in white mica. So I press apply auto and titanium we can define a background correction and press auto. This example is really nice because we can see what would be the difference between the old method, the black calibration curve, and the new method, that is the blue calibration curve. If you get a restricted range of variation for uh, titanium, in this case, it would be fairly similar. But if you have a large variation range, then it's important to correct for uh, the background. So when you are done, all the elements should be written 
OK means that we defined a calibration curve. When it's OK, you can press the button Apply Standardization and the program will close the standardization tool. It is possible to export the standardization parameter by clicking on Yes. In this case, you can save this parameter. So now I obtain a white mica advanced calibration and I can check that everything is fine by calculating the sum of oxide using this function and auto contrast. And I see that the sum is between 91 and 96, what we would expect for this white mica. Thanks for watching this tutorial and if you have any question, you can connect to the XMAPTURS forum available on xmaptours.com.